be a, a flying look through Slade's life story, very nearly. I've called the show Perseverance. Why? Well, that will be explained towards the end of the show. Now, Slade have been together for 20 years just about now, and I've been a Slade fan for, ooh, just half of that, as you can tell by my Slade t-shirt. So I was only too glad uh, when I was offered the chance to chat to Noddy Holder, Jimmy Lee, Don Powell, and Dave Hill. When I started chatting to Dave and Don, I didn't realise it was actually Dave and Don who formed Slade. Because Dave and myself were in a band together a couple of years before Slade actually, that was about 1964, we got to go on it. With That's a, right, I met Don, he was in a group called The Vendors, and uh, I was playing with a, a stupid trio, you see, in a pub, and this bloke called Chalky White, you see, mm. who was the manager of this Vendors group, spotted me in this trio, and this trio was really old blokes, and I was playing Shadows numbers. It was really weird, you know, and he, he, he spotted me, you see, and he thought, ah, he'll fit the role in my group, see. So along I went to meet this group in Bilston, and I didn't really know Don very well just then, because he was very quiet, see, and he didn't really say anything. And he said, well, he's the drummer, you know, but he was like, you know, really quiet, and I thought, hello, cop that one. And, uh, and there was a couple in the band who were real friendly, you know, like, come over, you know. One looked like Jimmy Savile, actually, in this band, you know, and they were a big, fat singer as well, who got a great voice. And I'll come in the group, and I also play Chuck Berry numbers, you know, they all sort of rock a duck a rock a duck you know. And um, I thought, I, we made up this group, and we stuck together for a while. And then I got friendly with Don, eventually later, got to know him, you see. And then this, the, the group had disarray in the later times, you see. I'd left my, I'd left my job at work, and, and Don was going professional, and all this sort of thing. Cut a long story short, basically the group split up. And we kept the name, as it happens, called the In-Betweens. And Don <coughs> knew a singer called Noddy Holder, you see, who was singing in a group called Steve Brett and the Mavericks. And it was in the days of the Maverick series, you know, where they used to wear the Maverick toys. And uh, I remember him, you see, and I always thought he was a bit of a jerk, actually, you know. I thought, oh. He used to stand on stage, sorry about this, but he used to do these funny <laughs> movements, you know, <laughs> and do sort of strange PJ Proby numbers, and, you know. But Nod was like the, the backup vocalist to this, you know, he'd get me type Steve singer. Steve Brett. Yeah. Steve Brett, yeah. And Nod was the one that used to do the talking to the audience, you see, and he had this, and, and Don had clocked him and seen him. He said, well, have a word with him. Well, talk about things that really come together like a glove. We'd split. And I was walking uptown, and there he was, Nod, you know, and I says, uh, fancy a coffee? So we wandered into this Beatty's place, it was, you know. And it was really like, you know, a typical Beatles story, like, fancy joining a group, mate. Mm. And he said, no, no, I'm doing nothing. He said, I said, well, um, we'll have a rehearsal, you see. But also, at the same time, we'd been auditioning for a bass player, you see. And then this kid come in, you know, with a polythene bag and a yeah, guitar yeah, stuck a in it. A little red nose, you know. A little red nose. 16, you know. Yeah. yeah. That was Jimmy Lee? Yeah. yeah. We used to call him Blood Knock. Yeah. A little no, red no, nose. Plum. We used to call him Little Plum. Oh, Little Plum, ah. Yeah, look, I mean, he's really young, and he comes straight from school, and it was Jim Lee, you see. And I, I spotted his style of playing. He played very fast. He played like a lead player would play a bass. I, I left school to join this group and they were all professional, this was 20 years ago, they were all professional musicians, I'm three years younger than them, so I was a kid, uh, I think when you're sort of 16 and 19, there's a big difference. Mm. So I, I left school and I saw all these groups that I couldn't see, that were all advertised in the paper, and it was the Midlands top group, and the fabulous so-and-sos, and I, I, I left school and I was in these pubs, which I, cause I always had a baby face, and I wasn't able to go into the pubs, and here I was playing in a band suddenly, and I saw the fabulous so-and-so and I thought they were rubbish. And I realised that the group I was in had something different, it was special, you know, we weren't like all this other stuff. And we sounded different. And other groups used to come and watch us. Wherever we played, it would be packed with, with, with other bands. And we never used to play top ten, 20 Engineer material. Stuff. Yeah, we never played top 20 material. We were always different. Dave Hill has always been an anomaly. Nod was always doing his, his bunny, you know, and, and I was always playing the bass like steam coming off the string. <laughs> so we went down this pub, and I think we played, what was it, Mr. Soul or some... Mr. Soul. It was Mr. Pitiful, but I was just shredding. Yeah. There's all of that, that kind of and thing. And Nod yeah. used to play a bit of a lead guitar, so I introduced the idea of having two lead players in the band, you see, and then he'd drop into rhythm, which was quite revolutionary at the time. It was sort of pre-Allman Brothers and anything, you see. And it was sort of a good idea, you know. And then we gelled it and we carried on with it, and that's how the group formed. Goodbye to Jane, goodbye to Jane, she's a dark horse.
Tide were at their most popular between 1971 and 1974, where they choked up a massive string of hits. And that string of continuous success has never been bettered. And not explained to me, they've never really had true recognition for that success. I mean, even when they had the, um, the 25, 20 years anniversary of Top of the Pops or something, they never showed a clip of us. I mean, things like that, you know, we had the mouse number yeah. ones. Uh, uh, of, in fact, of any in English act of groups, mm. we're, we're third in line behind the Beatles and Stones. Third in line behind the Beatles and Stones means terrific success. But does the lack of recognition for that success make Slade bitter? Bitter's not the word. I suppose we, we would it. like... Mm. Yeah, we accept it because we, it's always been that way for us. Mm. I mean, we would obviously like people to realise it, but... You know, if you start telling everybody, you're just blowing your own trumpet, really. So, as long as we know, I suppose we're happy. But, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's funny that, you know, people don't remember us. The only record they remember us for, really, from the early 70s is Merry Christmas, everybody. Right, yeah. They forget about all that. We had 18 in a row. Six of them number ones, and, and, the, and most of the others in the top three. Two or three, all the others got yeah. two. But nobody ever remembers us for that. Yeah.